There's a shaking in the spirit. Come on, let's press today. We press toward the mark of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. Come on, let's press. Press past our flesh. Come on, give him what he deserves. Come on, saints of God, open your mouth and bless the Lord. For the psalmist said, I will bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Come on, let's bless his name together. Come on, I invite you to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Come on, let's lift his name today. Oh, let the praises of the Lord rise in this room. Come on, open your mouth and bless him. Open your mouth and celebrate him. For he's a good God. He's a mighty God. He's a sovereign God. He's a holy God. Come on, give him glory. Let the glory of the Lord rise in this room. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody give him glory in the room. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can put your hands together. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Yeah, let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Yes, Lord. Everybody say. the whole time right there. Come on. Let the glory of the Lord everybody. Let the glory of the Lord. Come on church you say. Say let the glory let it rise. Let the praise of our King yes rise. Come on Zion you say let the glory of the Lord rise. Let the glory of the Lord and the praise is filled this room today. Let it rise. Oh, we say, oh, let it rise. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Song, every song lifted up. Let the 
blowing a fresh wind within the nations and blowing a fresh wind within the earth. And even as I blow my fresh wind among the earth, I call for my church Zion to arise. I call for you to arise in this day, arise in this decade, arise in this moment, and arise in this time. For surely I am now placing you in the valley of the dry bones, living bread. And even as you are in this place and in the valley of the dry bones, you must follow how I designed and how I have architected my society and my kingdom. It is in my movement and it is in my timing that you begin to prophesy to the winds and prophesy to the bones. For surely you see the shaking and the quaking and the movement in what I'm doing in the earth. But my bride, my ecclesia, do not worry, do not retreat, do not fall back. But I call for you to take your position in me. I call for you to rise up in your position in me as my governing body as my governing source as my kingdom body that roars in this place and surely my sons and daughters yes there is wars that are approaching in the nations but as I decreed and declared in my word in Daniel 10 and Daniel 11 as the kings argue amongst themselves my word stands true that those that know me shall rise rise up and do exploits in me. So I'm calling you to a greater place of revelation. I'm calling you to a greater place of intimacy. And I'm calling you into a greater place of government so that you can do exploits in my kingdom, says the spirit of the living God. For surely in this hour, yes, I am causing you to do exploits in my kingdom, but I am coming to give you keys, and those keys are through your obedience. I heard the Spirit of the God say clearly that my children must know my voice, and a stranger they cannot follow in this season. For surely I am coming to get more of your obedience. For surely there is exploits coming. I am surely going to pour out, but I am calling calling my people to a new place of obedience in me, a new place of discipline in me. For surely I'm telling you, fear not. Fear not for what you will see in the days to come. Fear not for what you will hear in the rumors of wars, in seeing wars. But you must take place in understanding my word, in seeking my face, in praying to me like never before. A new level Level of obedience is what I require out of Zion today. A new level. Come close to my altar. You won't be burned, but you must come close so that I will purify you. You must come close that I will crucify. I have to sacrifice. I have to purge you, says the Spirit of the living God. I need you to come close, come close. Don't be afraid of the fire, come close. This will be a new season of purging. But keep your eyes on me, says God. Keep your eyes on me. Have no fear in your heart, for there will be much that you will see in the days to come. But keep your eyes on me. I have you in my hand. And lay it down, I hear the spirit of the God saying a new level of discipline is coming. It's a requirement in this season for my children to be disciplined in me and to obey me. The Father says no more playing with my fire, playing with my anointing, playing with who I am. Oh, don't play any longer, saints of God. Don't play any longer. But watch what I will do. Watch what I will do. You don't I even hear people saying, I don't know how to let that go. There is a new season of deliverance coming, but you must be truthful with yourself. You must be truthful with yourself and lay it at the altar and watch what I will do for my people. For surely that is how you will have my protection in this hour. Surely that is how salvation will come in this hour for you and your household. But you've got to be obedient to me. You've got to be obedient to my spirit, says the spirit of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, God.
God says, uh, yes, you must be obedient to what I'm doing in this season and in this hour. But I hear the Lord saying, yes, there is a fresh wind coming. Yes, there is revival coming. And God said that I am going to catch this house up. I'm going to catch you up from the years that were lost. The wilderness wandering, the years of the pommel worm, the locust, the canker worm, the caterpillar ate away. The years the building plants have stopped and have stagnated. But the Holy Spirit said today, I'm going to catch this house up. And to the people of God, I'm going to catch your house up. I'm going to catch your house up too. You will benefit from the house being caught up. I will visit your house too. I will visit your house if you just stand still and be steadfast and unmovable even in the face of adversity. I'm going to catch your house up. The last shall be first and the first shall be last. There's a flow of advancement coming. The Holy Spirit is sending a new wave, a fresh wind of revival. When the remnant came out of the wilderness, they were on a mission to conquer the promised land with determination and with confidence. There is a promised land waiting for living bread. There's a promised land waiting for this house. But our pace cannot be the same. We must pick up the pace with the same determination and confidence. This is the time and this is the season, said the spirit of the living God. I'm going to catch this house up and I'm going to catch your house up too. Oh, I'm going to catch you up in your spirit. I'm going to catch you up in your spirit. I'm going to catch you up in the spirit. Press fire, press fire. I'm going to catch you up in my spirit. I'm going to catch you up in my spirit. I'm going to catch you up in my spirit. Press fire. I'm gonna catch you up in my spirit. 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 I wanna catch you up in my spirit. I wanna catch you up in my spirit. I wanna catch you up in my spirit. Give him praise and give him glory for his fresh fire. The fresh winds of God are reigniting the flame. They are reigniting the flame today, says the Lord. Come on, as I blow and fan the flame today, be reignited as I burn up everything not like you. As I burn up everything not like me, says the Lord. Burn it up in the fire. God, I want more. God, I want more. God, I want more of your fresh fire. God, I want more. God, I want more. God, I want more of your fresh fire. God, I want more. God, I want more. God, I want more of your fresh fire. You say, God, I want more. God, I want more. God, I want more of your fresh fire. You say, God, I want more. God, I want more. God, I want more of your fresh fire. Come on and declare the word of the Lord in this place is true. Come on, open your mouth and give him praise. The fresh fire 
is descending in this house. Come on, put your hands together. Hallelujah. Give him glory. Come on, give him glory. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
Just lift your hands one more time in the house of the Lord. Let the lifting of your hands be like the evening sacrifice. Father, we give you glory. For this is your house. This is your house of prayer. This is your house of worship. Lord, we are your vessels. As we lift our hands, Lord, and lift our hearts to you, Lord, we thank you, Lord God, for another day that we are able to worship, glorify, and magnify your name. Let your glory fill this room this morning in a great way, Lord. Let the manifested presence of God be evident in every life today in Jesus' name. We give you praise. But put your hands together and give God glory. You may take your seats. Give God glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, descend your throne. Make this place your habitation, Lord. As we worship with one voice in unity. Reverence to you. Let the essence of heaven fill this place today. As we gather together, we sing to you. Lord, descend your throne. Lord, descend your throne. Make this place your habitation, Lord. As we worship with one voice in unity, giving reverence to you, let the essence of heaven fill this place today. As we gather together, we sing to you. Lord, we magnify you. Lord, we magnify you. Glory, 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 glory. 
up from the earth or draw men unto me. Be glorified. Well, it's good to be in the presence of the Lord. Mm. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Come on, you need to keep praising him. You need to keep glorifying him. Get your breakthrough right now in Jarabashunke Labasata. Hallelujah. 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 Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. We glorify your name, Jesus. We glorify your name, Lord. We glorify you, Jesus. praise. Hallelujah. There's none like you, Jesus. Glory, 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 glory. Bless the Lord, O my soul, all that is within me. All that is within me. I worship you, almighty God. I magnify you, Almighty God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for healing. Thank you for deliverance, O oh God. Hallelujah. Glory. Come on, put your hands together for the Lord. Hallelujah. You may be seated. 
Hallelujah. 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 I don't know about you, but the praises of God are in my soul, in my spirit. I want to glorify him and magnify him and let him know. Hallelujah. All the praise, all the glory, all the honor is to you, O Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Just excuse me for a minute while I just... Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm still here because of your mercy. It is because of his mercy that we are not consumed. It's because of his faithfulness that we are still here. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. I love you, Jesus. you, Jesus. Hallelujah. There's none like you, oh Lord. You're worthy of all my praise. And I lift your name, Jesus. Oh, all of my days there's none like you nobody no one like you Lord and when I think about what you've done for me it makes me want to praise you to give you all the glory yes there's none like you Lord search the heavens and earth. There's nobody like you, Jesus. There's nobody like you, Lord. There's nobody like you. We come into your presence with a heart of praise. We lift your name, Jesus. We give you glory. not ashamed to praise you, Lord. I adore you. <laughs> we praise you on one accord. Let your glory fall upon each, each place. <laughs> Cause your glory to rest upon breath upon our face. Breathe upon these bones. Breathe upon these bones, Lord. Let your fresh wind blow. Uh, bring life. Uh, oh, we praise you. We glorify and magnify your name, Lord. I want to say thank you. Thank you. Where would I be without you? Well, lift your hands. Get over some
let's just sing this. I lift my hands in total adoration to you. You reign on the throne for you. be seated. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. He loves you before you loved him. I love him because he first, first loved me. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, it's good to be in the house of the Lord to be able to worship and praise and honor and glorify him. I'm so full of praise. I want to, sometimes you don't have the words to say. Thank you, Jesus. Most of us, if we really considered where he brought us from, what he brought us through, and that we're still here, I said, Lord, I thank you. He's been good to us. His mercy endures forever and we have to admit that much of what God did for us was not because we deserved it he just had mercy on us come on so lift your hand and say thank God for mercy yeah I didn't deserve it but he gave me mercy he didn't give me justice he gave me mercy hallelujah 
and his mercy endures forever. Well, let's go on. I'm trying to keep my composure. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. The glory of the Lord is in this place. God is blowing his breath on you. Just feel his breath on your, on your face. He's just blowing his breath. Breath of God on your face. The breath of God. The breath of God. The breath of God. Breathe on me, Lord. Breathe upon me. Breathe fresh upon me. Breathe fresh upon me. I need a fresh, hallelujah. I need a fresh anointing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Well, let me welcome all of you to Living Bread. Welcoming all of you here, all of you that are When, when, when these moments happen, you need to take advantage of the presence of the Lord. Because when his presence is here, the Bible says in his presence is fullness of joy. And then it says, and pleasures evermore. It's a pleasure to be in the presence of the Lord. It's a privilege to be in the presence of of the Lord. And when you're there, hallelujah, hallelujah, when you're there, praise God, take advantage of his voice, take advantage of his healing, his deliverance. Thank you, Lord. This time, we're going to get ready to worship the Lord in giving. Amen. I want us to prepare our hearts. How many cheerful givers do we have? in the house of the Lord. The Lord's blessings, the Bible says, makes rich and adds no sorrow. But we want to give you an opportunity to sow, to give your tithe, your offerings, your, if you have a first fruit, you can do that also. Uh, we have decreed over the first fruit and we believe that the decree of the Lord will be established. We want you to prepare. If you need an off offering envelope, the, the, uh, Ushers have them for you if you're giving in the sanctuary. You can give on your instruments. You can give on GiveLify. You can give on, praise God, our church website, www.lbmwestgate.com. www.lbmwestgate.com. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And, and praise God. And so you can give. But let's give because it's important. It's important. Because God's economics does not work by the Dow Jones, you know, or the, the you know, it, it, it doesn't work by the S&P. It, it, it works by the activity of the kingdom. Give and it shall be given unto you. So you activate it by giving. If you want to bless Pastor Joyce and myself, you can do that by giving on our cash app. That's Ken, K E N. D 1953 K E N D 1953 and you can be a blessing there but give as we sow as we give we're worshiping the Lord the Bible says that he remembers all of our giving all of our offerings and our sacrifices so when you have your offerings prepared and ready I'm going to ask you to stand in the house of the Lord stand on your feet Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hold those offerings up to the Lord, and we want to decree over them together. Say, I decree the Lord increases me a thousand times more. I decree God gives me power to get wealth. I decree that whatever I do, it will prosper. 
I decree that I am anointed for the overflow. I decree that I will inherit the land, the property the Lord is giving me. I decree that God is bringing me into my wealthy place. I decree that I am anointed with fresh oil and I am fat and flourishing. I decree wealth and riches are in my house. I decree I will increase more me and my children. I decree God saves me now and sends me prosperity. I decree let peace, shalom be within my walls and prosperity. I decree peace within my borders and let me be filled with the finest of wheat. I decree all grace abounds toward me. I have sufficiency of all things at all times. And I am abounding unto every good work. Keep it lifted. Father, we give you praise, honor, and glory for the privilege, the honor to give. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that even now that there is an active manifestation of giving and receiving being manifest to your people, O oh God. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you're causing your people to be made rich in every way so they can be generous on every occasion. Let their generosity bring glory, honor, and praise to you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Those of you that are giving on your instruments, you may be seated. Those of you that are giving in the house and standing, if you'll come just face the center aisle, just step out, come down, place your offering in the offering container. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you are so good to us. And we give you all the praise and all the glory. Come on, somebody give him glory in this place. so is 
He's not just good, he's so good. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, praise the name of the Lord. We thank you for your giving today. We want to release our children for children's ministry. Amen. This morning, I'm going to let them go. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give them a hand. Just Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for our children. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The generation of the righteous is blessed. Amen. Hallelujah. How many are ready to receive the word of the Lord? I hope you came to receive. And if you'll, if you'll help me by saying amen now and then, let me know that you're still alive. <laughs> That'll encourage me if you say amen every now and then. You know, it kind of encourages that somebody is listening. Amen? amen. Praise God. Well, we're going to uh, go to the word of God. Um, but bef let's pray before we begin. Uh, let's pray. Father, we thank you and praise you, Lord. We have... We have seen your glory just settle as a dew over this house this morning. And Father, we ask that, that 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 same glory, that same glory cause, Lord God, your people to be transformed. Lord, there's glory upon us. There's glory upon your word. Let the glory of God be upon this word we release today. We bind every work of the enemy. We shut down all second heaven activity in the name of Jesus and by his authority. And we say in Jesus' name that, that uh, demons are bound. You are bound in chains that cannot be broken. Uh, you're inoperable, unable to move. We dislodge you from your high place and we bring you under the feet of Jesus. Now, Father, let the holy angels of God be released to confirm this word, to activate this word in Jesus' name, and we give you praise. Amen. And amen. I want you to turn with me to 1 Peter, the fifth chapter of the book of 1 Peter. And I'm going to have, I'm going to have a reader this morning uh, to, to help me. Uh, it's, it's not because I can't read. It's because I, um, I'm going through some medical procedures and uh, you know and I I had uh, one of my eyes have been I had surgery on my left eye uh, Tuesday I'll have surgery on my right eye and uh, and so I'm seeing things kind of wrong you know so if I look at you and and uh, if, I, if I look at Brother Tony and call him Sister So-and-So, y'all know I'm not crazy. <laughs> I just can't see. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, it's kind of funny. I'm going to get into my word. But I, I was, you know, this, is, this has been really a, a challenge because this eye is so good. When I close this eye, I can see so good. This eye is all blurry. And you know you're trying to navigate with these both of these eyes, and so I was out doing a uh, an appraisal, and I mean a reinspection of an appraisal on la on last uh, a few days ago. And I'm up in the attic, and I'm coming down, you know, I'm I'm coming down, and I'm and I'm stepping down the steps, and and I, and I don't know why I thought I was stepping to the last step. I mean down on the, on the floor, and I fell flat on my face <laughs> it was kind of funny I fell the 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 the, uh, the the homeowner was downstairs what what boom you know <laughs> I'm sitting there look, I'm sitting there feeling stupid you know on the on the on the floor and and then I and so I, I knew I said uh, I gotta I can't wait to get this thing uh, taken care of and then yesterday I was down in my lower level and I was reaching over to get one of my one of my golf balls, you know, for my, 
to hit it in my net, and I fell down, knocked over the the uh, the clothes rack and everything else. I said, Lord, have mercy. I can't wait till Tuesday. And uh, if if things don't work out, y'all might see me with a patch on one, on one side of my eye. You know, I mean, I'll put a patch over that and, and just see what the one. No, I'm going to see perfectly. I know that. I know that. Amen. Um, so I'm going to I'm going to have I'm going to ask um, Elder Johnson to help me uh, by reading. I want you to, to turn with me to first Peter, the fifth chapter. And I want you to I want to start at the sixth verse and I want to read through the 11th verse. If you would do that, I would appreciate that. Pastor. It says, humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your cares upon him, for he careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make your perfect step, excuse me, make your perfect established strength and settle you. To him be glory, dominion forever and ever. Amen. Amen. It says here, um, humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that you may be exalted in due time. Casting all of your cares upon him, for he cares for you. Now, verse number eight is really, I'm getting into the part that I really want to kind of emphasize, be sober, be vigilant. Why? Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour, whom resists steadfast in faith, knowing that the same afflictions accomplished in your brothering that are in the world, but the God of all grace, who has called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, established, strengthened, and settle you. I want to I want to focus on verse number ten. It says, "But the Lord God of all grace, who hath called us unto His eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen." And settle you. You know this is this scripture. The Lord gave me this scripture, and uh, and really I was applying it to myself, as as I you know and. Um, but I believe with all my heart that it is a word for all of us. We have an adversary. We have an adversary. We we're not. Uh, if if life would be so so much easier if we didn't have to deal with an adversary. If we didn't have an, an a, a adversarial relationship with the devil. The devil hates us and I hate him. And, and, it's, and it's important that we understand that, that that is the reason that we have to go through many of the things we go through. Now, I'm not saying that everything that we go through is because of the devil. But I can tell you this, that a lot of the things we go through is because of the devil. 
is because he has a plan to try to destroy us. It says that the devil talks about be vigilant. In other words, be alert. Be sober. In other words, do not be intoxicated by anything. He's not just, he's not talking about uh, drinking whiskey, wine, and smoking reefer. You know how old I am talking about reefer. I don't think they even got reefer no more. You know. <laughs> but, <laughs> but he's talking about being sober, not being uh, intoxicated by anything. Now, if you notice, he starts to talk. He first, Peter starts to talk about being humble. Because... Because if we're not careful, we can be so intoxicated by ourselves, intoxicated by what we have, intoxicated by where we've been, into intoxicated by what we've accomplished, intoxicated by our gifts, intoxicated by uh, so many different things can cause us to be uh, less than sober. The Bible says that we are not to think of ourselves more highly than we ought to think, but to think soberly as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. So God wants us to be sober. Vigilant means stay awake. It's no time to be sleeping on the job. Because we've got an adversary, you need to be sober. If you get caught up in pride, the devil will take you out. If you get caught up in yourself, the devil will take you out. The devil doesn't care about your title. He doesn't care about uh, your gift. He doesn't care about uh, what label you go by. He is uh, after us. And if we're not, if we don't maintain our sobriety, our soberness and, our, and stay awake and not go to sleep discerning properly the time that we're in. We're in a time that we need to be very discerning. We're, we're in a time and, and, and we need to understand, praise God, that he says be sober, be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, Walk it seeking whom he may devour. The devil wants to eat you up. He wants to eat you up. He wants to devour you. He wants to consume you. And so it's important that we stay sober, that we stay vigilant. Verse 10 is really what I want to emphasize. It says, but the God of all grace, who has called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after ye have suffered a while, make ye perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. I I'm going to read it in the NIV. These letters are pretty big, so I think I can handle it. In the NIV translation, it says, And the God of all grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. Is anybody in here? Just amen. say amen if you're in here. Good. I'm going to read it in the Amplified Translation for another way to see this. It says, and after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace who imparts all blessing favor, who has called you to his own eternal glory in Christ Jesus, will himself complete and make you what you ought to be. Establish and ground you securely and strengthen and settle you. First thing I want you to realize is that 
suffering as a believer, suffering as a believer, suffering, even if you're not a believer, suffering is inevitable. We will suffer. The Bible says he that would live godly must suffer persecution. There is suffering in the way that in our path as believers in Christ. There are certain things that we inevitably have to go through. You cannot go around them. You must go through them. And suffering is a part of our lifestyle. And so we need to understand and we need to be able to embrace the fact that we are going to go through some things. It's inevitable. You're going to suffer something. You, 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 may, you, you, you may be good in one area, but you suffer in another area. You, you, you may not suffer physically, but, but, but you may suffer mentally. You may not suffer physically, but you may suffer in your relationships. You might be suffering in your marriage. You might be suffering on your job. You might be suffering with your children. You might be suffering with your boss, but you're going to suffer. You are going to go through some things. Look at, look at somebody and say, suffering is inevitable. You're going to have to go through. And so don't get in your mind because you got saved and, and born again and because you know the word that you can just uh, speak and everything. You know, I know some teach that, you know, the devil, you know, I, I'm, let me tell you something. The devil is defeated. However, however, he's defeated, but he's still fighting. <laughs> it is, in fact, when you, when you, when you really, when you really uh, study this particular scripture, the devil as an adversary, the, it actually, that word adversary has several different meanings. One meaning, of course, is that he's, a, he's, he's a, uh, an adversary against you uh, physically as like a war or like a fight. But also there is a, a, a the one of, uh, um, definition of that uh, Greek word is the word to talk about being a legal matter. He litigates. He's, he, he's your adversary. He's a, he's a, how can I say it? He's a, a, uh, uh, an opposing attorney against you. In other words, Satan not only fights you physically, mentally, emotionally, but the devil fights you legally. He knows the, the, the legalities of redemption. He understands the legality. He knows that, praise God, that apart from Christ, there is no salvation. He understands that if we violate the, 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 the word of God, that, that if we don't repent or if we don't turn from that, he can use that against us legally. That's why the Bible says that Jesus is a mediator between God and man. In other words, the Bible says that, that we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. In other words, Jesus is our attorney. And he's better than F. Lee Bailey, Johnny Cochran. He's better than any other attorney because not only does he litigate, but also, praise God, he mitigates situations by his blood. Because if we walk in the light as he is in the light, the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all unrighteousness. In other words, praise God, that even though we may fail, even though we may fall, even though we may do something that is wrong, because we keep walking in the light of his word, his blood cleanses us, and when the devil says they're guilty, Jesus said they are innocent because of my blood. <laughs> Suffering is inevitable. 
We have an adversary, the devil, that's fighting us on several fronts. He's fighting us physically. He's fighting us in our homes. He's fighting us on our job. He's fighting us in society. He's fighting us in the culture. He's fighting into us in the church. He's fighting us, and he's, and he's litigating against us. But Jesus is there, and the Bible says here in verse 10 that, but the God of all grace. The God of all grace, who hath called us. Let me, let me, let me get this. It says, but the God of all grace. The Amplified says, who imparts all blessings and favor. In other words, raise God. We got an adversary, but we got a God of all grace. We got a God of all favor. We got a God that's working on our behalf. We got a God, praise God, that's in our corner. And no matter what we're suffering with, what we're going through, what we're dealing with, praise God, the God of all grace, whom imparts blessing and favor, who has called you to be his own, mm. called you to his own eternal glory in Christ Jesus, will himself in other words he's not this is, an angel's not going to do this Jesus does this himself isn't it good to know that God will do it himself he didn't send the prophet to do it for you he himself and he will complete you he said after you have suffered a while. Suffering is inevitable. One of the things is that, that I, when the Lord was dealing with, when the Lord gave me this, I asked the Lord, I said, how long is a while? Because, hey, you know, if I know how long is a, is a while, <laughs> Helps me to wait better when I know it ain't going to be but three years. When I know it ain't going to be but six months. I said, Lord, what is a while? Because <laughs> he said, when you suffered a while. So it's going to, it's going, you're going to suffer for a period, for a season, for a time. There's going to be a time of suffering in your life. You're going to suffer a while. I said, how long is a while? And the Lord, the Spirit of God began to say, just take me. He said, it was 13 years for Joseph. Because the Bible says at 17 is when God gave him the dream. At 30 is when he came out of the prison. He said it was 13 years. He said, for Abraham, it was 25 years because Abraham was 75 years old when I called him. He was over 100 years old when he got the promise. I said, Lord, that's a long time. And then he said, Job, he said, a while for Job. Many people think Job was sick for years and years. But uh, the, 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 uh, those that have, that, uh, the commentaries say that it only lasted about nine months. So when you talk about Job's suffering, praise God, don't look at it as if it was years and years and years and years. Uh, his suffering, in other words, Job's suffering wasn't as long as you thought it was. But the Bible says after God brought him out that God gave him double what he had before. Is anybody in here? Uh, so maybe you are in your suffering season. Maybe you're in your suffering season. You've been going through. And, and praise God in, in different areas of your life. But let me say this. God has a purpose in suffering. The devil, what the devil meant for evil, the, 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 the thing he brought in your life to take you out, God is going to use it to take you in. God will use what the devil thought would have killed you 
and use it as a miracle testimony for the glory of God and for the salvation of mankind. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, so while you're suffering a little while, oh, my goodness, I didn't know I had that on. <laughs> but no matter what you're going through, realize that God is going to take it and use it for your good. And so when the enemy comes in, but you need to be sober, you need to be vigilant. One of the things that, that we need to, to be able to discern is when, praise God, is that when the enemy comes in against us, praise God, to bring us into certain uh, sufferings or persecution, we, we've got to be sober enough to understand, praise God, that God it may be using that situation to bring you to your palace. He may be using uh, the, 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 he may be using the pit and, and slavery and prison time to, uh, cool by shout. See, some of y'all, y'all looking all nice. Some of y'all, praise God, y'all's, uh, uh, y'all's face is, is on the, 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 uh, yeah, they got, they got y'all in the post office. You know what they put up those, what do they call those? Uh, wanted posters. And I know the devil has me on his, on his I know the devil got my, my face up there wanted. Wanted for, 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 for preaching the gospel. Wanted for seeing souls saved. Wanted for seeing people blessed and revived. Wanted for prophesying and laying hands and casting out devils and doing miracles and pre. Uh, he wants to take you out. And so while you're suffering a little while, learn to be sober enough to suffer in, in a way, praise God, that does not allow the enemy to have a legal right to continue your suffering. In other words, your suffering comes to an end if you'll keep the right attitude because God don't bring you out of your suffering until he has gotten out of you all the things, praise God, that was in you that needed to be corrected, needed to be dealt with, and so praise God. So while you're suffering, tell God, just get everything out of me that I got in me that you don't want in me. In other words, the devil's coming against me. I'm going through the fire, the flood, but just get it out of me. God had to get out of Joseph's pride because Joseph had his dream. Then he went out telling all his brothers, I'm about to, I'm about to take over this thing. <laughs> y'all about to bow down to me. <laughs> then he had another dream to my daddy, mama, y'all going to bow down too. <laughs> I could just see his father saying, go outside, boy, and cut me down a hickory switch. Some of y'all young folk don't know nothing about that, you know. Y'all, you, you know, you, you don't want to be abused, but, but my dad and them used to abuse us. Make you go out and cut the switch down yourself. Go out, go out and cut down a hickory switch. And then daddy would be just cutting off all the little, the leaves, you know, the stuff would have made it. <laughs> Say, leave some of them leaves on there, daddy, because uh, leaves slow that thing down. So while you, what do you do while you're suffering? What do you do while you're suffering? Joseph maintained his integrity while he was going through. And so God sometime, when I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, how long is a while? And one thing I learned from the Holy Spirit is that a while depends. Your a while depends. It depends on how effective God's doings in your heart, in your 
mind, in your spirit, in your life. It's, it's all about how you go through, not just because you went through. Because if you go through right, when you come out, you won't even have the smell of smoke on you. Now, you know good and well if some of us, if they were, if, 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 if uh, Nebuchadnezzar was talking about throwing us in the furnace, we'd have been having a fit. They, they'd, have, they'd have been grabbing one leg and we'd have been holding on to, we'd have probably took Nebuchadnezzar with us. We'd have grabbed holes so tight to Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar. <laughs> but this is what I want you to see. It's, going, you, you're, it's inevitable to suffer, so how you go through your suffering is going to determine how long you stay there. And they said, you know, king, you live on forever, but we ain't going to bow down. And he said, well, heat it up seven times hotter. And, 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 and but... They went through believing God. The Bible says here that resist him. He's an adversary like a lion, but it says resist him steadfast in the faith. While you're going through, did you keep your faith? While you were going through, did you keep your love? While you were going through, did you keep your joy? Uh, see, because how you go through will determine how long you got to go through. And I don't know about you, but I don't like going through a long time. Thank you, Jesus. Is anybody in here? Uh, so I didn't get my answer as to what a while I was. <laughs> You know, sometimes that's the way it is. God will give you something. He won't, he, the reason he don't give you the answer is because he wants to take you on a trip to understand more about that subject matter. You can't complain your way out of your suffering. You can't backbite your way out of your suffering. Let me tell you this. You can't fight your way out of your suffering. In other words, praise God, you resist him steadfast in the faith. You maintain your integrity like Job regardless of what you're going through. Job would not get rid of his integrity even though his wife, Sister Job, she said, honey, You serving God and he didn't get made you sick and got boils on your skin? Why don't you just curse him and die? You can't curse your way out of your suffering. You can't blame God for your suffering. Suffering is inevitable in this earth. In, 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 in walking in this earth, you're going to suffer some things. You're going to go through some things. Folk ain't going to like you. Folk going to talk about you, even in the church. Folk going to leave you. Folk gonna, and, and you can't come out fighting. I know we grew up in the hood. In the hood, you had to know how to fight. I didn't have to fight much. I fought some, but I didn't have to fight much because I had so many brothers. I had so many brothers. I was... You know, folk would say, they, folk would be messing with me, and some of the other guys would say, man, you better, you better leave that man, you better leave him alone. That's a Hogan. What do I care about a Hogan? You know, you, well, you know Richard, Robert, Sam, Timus, Sloan, Emmett, Paul. Those are his brothers. If you mess with him, you're going to have a whole family coming after you. So you're going to suffer. It's inevitable. You're going to go through. And, but he said for a while. Now, and this is what the Lord said to me. And I want to, because we, we need to know what a while. You know what? The, 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 the Bible says that after you suffer a while. And, this, and so he said, I asked him about how long was a while. And, he, and of course, he didn't tell me. I, he told me all the other stuff. And uh, he said it depends, and so on and so forth. But 
He told me to tell some of you that it's been a while. Look at your neighbor and say, it's been a while. In other words, when it's been a while, you're coming to the end of your suffering. I don't know about you, but I've been going through some stuff and it's been a while. <laughs> Come on, say, it's been a while. Uh, say, I've been going through suffering, it's been a while. I don't know how long you have been going through, but God shifted your attitude and instead of you being bitter going through what you're going through, you have become better. You have become more uh, patient. You become more loving. You become more empathetic. You become, uh, uh, so God has been working on you and it's been a while now. In other words, God is about to do something in your life. God is about to move in your life because it's been a while now. I don't know about you, but it's been a while. Say, how long have you been going through this, Apostle Hogan? It's been a while. You know, and that's the way God works. Many times, the time period that God is allowing you to go to, the while that you're going through, praise God, when God gets all the stuff out of you and you're, and you're shouting while you're going through. You're praising while you're going through. You're lifting up your hands while you're going through. You, you're encouraging other folk while you're going through. God looks at that and says, okay, it's been a while. It's been a while. It's been a while for that daughter. It's been a while for that brother. It's been a while for them. And now I'm about to do something in their life. Look at your neighbor and say, it's been a while. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, glory to God. It's been a while. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, God just wanted to see if you'd shout while you were going through. He just wanted to see if, you would, if praise and worship would still be the same for you, even though you're going through trials and tribulations and mountains and valleys and fire and all kinds of stuff. Hallelujah. Glory to God. All he wanted to know if you come out singing, if you come out shouting, if you come out rejoicing, if you come out thanking him. It's been a while. The Lord is saying to some of you, it's been a while. I see you. You've been praising me going through your financial situations and you kept on praising me. When ends wouldn't meet, you kept on worshiping me. When you were going through in your marriage, you just kept on praising me. And say, Lord, I know you can work it out. Whatever you're going through, can you shout? Can you praise? Can you glorify God while you're going through? I don't know nothing but to praise God. I, when my normal reaction to going through is I say, thank you, Jesus. I say, praise you because even though I'm going through, I'm here to go through. I'm still alive to go through. And I don't know what you're working in me, but I'm suffering for a while. And the Lord let me know on, on some of the things that I'm dealing with. The Lord says, it's been a while. Some things are about to come to an end. Some things that you've been suffering and going through is about to come to an end. Because uh, it's been a while. It's been a while. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 10 again. Let's look at it one more time. I'm going, going back to the NIV. And the God of all grace who called you. Did he call you? You're called of God. He called you, not just called you, but he called you to his eternal glory in Christ after you had suffered a little while. Will himself restore you, make you strong, firm, and steadfast. Can I just elaborate on those things? God is about to restore some stuff. God says, after
after you have suffered, come out shouting, come out dancing, come out praising. Now, I'm about to do some restoration in your life. I'm about to restore some stuff that you lost while you were going through. Stuff that, that the devil stole while you were going through, I'm about to restore them. I was looking at restoration. In, 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 in the King James Version, it says that he will perfect you. And, 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 and in the NIV, it says restore. But perfect, it means, uh, if you look at it in the Amplified Translation, read, read uh, uh, that 10th verse in the Amplified Translation, if you would. And after you have suffered a little while, a little while. the God of all grace, mm -hmm. who imparts all blessing mm -hmm. and favor... <laughs> who has called you to his own mm -hmm. eternal glory yes. in Christ Jesus yeah. will himself complete. Complete, complete. That's what I want, to complete. He will complete, go ahead. And make you what you ought to be. And make you what you ought to be. <laughs> in other words, I want to be what I ought to be. I don't want to be what I am now. I want to be what I ought to be. In order for God to make you what you ought to be, you ought to be in power. You ought to be powerful. You ought to be anointed. You ought to be strong. In other words, through your suffering, God is completing you. Yes. He's making you what you need to be. Because you ain't what you think you are. Because the proof is in the fire. Until you go through the suffering, you, there is no way to measure if you're complete. In other words, he will perfect you. He will complete you. He will make you what you ought to be. Restoration, he will restore you. In other words, he will bring you back into existence. He will bring you back into existence, use, or like. In other words, he will bring you back to a former, original, or normal condition. Some God, God need to make some of us normal. Because we are, we are abnormal. Suffering will, will get stuff out of you that I'm telling you. It's the times that I go through that I find myself on my face before God. Sometimes that's the only way God can get you to your knees. Folk, folks, folk will stop coming to church, but then when they go through a crisis, they come back to the church. In other words, praise God, sometimes you're suffering and what you go through. But God says that it's been a while. So now what I'm going to do is I'm about to restore you. I'm about to complete you. I'm about to, I've been working on you. While you were suffering, I was working on you. While you were going through, I was working on your, uh, your character. I was working on your mindset. I was working on your paradigms, the way you think. I've been working on, praise God, stuff in your life because I've been fashioning you and molding you and making you. I've been making you and molding you into a giant in the spirit. I'm restoring you. Another definition says, I bring back to a state of health, soundness, and vigor. In other words, God began, when God began to say, he said, I'm, son, I'm restoring. He said, I'm restoring. He said, I'm bringing restoration because they have suffered and they've been suffering for a while. But God says, I'm about to bring them. I'm about to cause things to be restored. I'm about to bring them back to the place. How many want God to restore their joy? Restore your peace. Restore your praise. Restore your shout. Restore, praise God. Everything that the enemy has stolen, God restore. 
Restore your relationships. Restore your marriage. Restore your family. Restore your children back. The Bible says that God will bring our children back from the enemy's land. He's about to restore some stuff. I know you've been going through and it's been a while, but God says, I'm restoring back to you. I'm giving you back your joy. I'm giving you back your peace. I'm giving you back your passion. I'm giving you back your desire. I'm giving you back your anointing. I'm giving you back your shout. I'm giving you back your holler in the spirit. Have you ever hollered in the spirit and just said, glory! Give me back my holler. Give me back my shout. Give me back my joy. Give me back my peace. Give me back my passion. Give me back, give me back everything that the devil has stolen. He said, after you suffer a little while, he's gonna restore you, complete you, make you what you ought to be. If folks wondering why you're going through, just tell them, God is making me what I ought to be. Making me what I ought to be. This thing is not for naught. This suffering is not for naught. Just like Jesus suffered on the cross and became the first fruits of them that slept and rose from the dead, God is restoring life to dead things in your life. Ah, he's restoring. Somebody is getting their health back. Somebody is getting their joy back. Somebody's getting their faith back. Restore my faith, oh God. Restore me back. I remember the song Andre Couch made years ago. He said, take me back. Take me back to the place where I first received you. God is going to give you the joy you had when he first baptized you with the Holy Ghost. He's going to give you the peace back that you had when you first started. Hallelujah. You remember when you gave your life to the Lord. You were the first one at church. You were dancing all up and down the aisles. You were going through, but you were still shouting. You were still dancing. You were still praising. You were still lifting your hands. You were still spinning. Some of you were falling out in the floor and rolling in the floor in the Holy Ghost. But God says, I will restore. It's been a while, but God is restoring. It's been a while, but God is giving back. Hallelujah. He's restoring everything that the canker worm, the palmer worm, the caterpillar, Abba Shota. God began to let me know. He said, son, I'm going to restore this house. I'm going to restore this place. He said, folk don't think it's happening, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to restore and I'm going to fill this place up, not just with people, but I will fill it with my glory. How many want the glory back? Lord, I want your glory back. I want the glory back. I want the cloud to fill the house. I want you to move in this place. Hallelujah. Restore. Restore. Somebody say restoration. I'm getting my restoration. God knew you were going through. God knew when you were praising him that the bills at home still needed to be paid. And when you lifted your hands and glorified God, God knew, praise God, that you were still having marital issues. But God says, I'm restoring relationships. I'm restoring the things that the enemy took from you. I'm restoring marriages. I'm restoring families. I'm restoring members. I'm restoring you back. And everything that the devil tried to drag out of you and take out of you, I'm putting it back in you. I see folks shouting again. I see folks dancing again. I see folks in joy again. I see people praising God again. I see people lifting their hands again. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. And let the King of glory come in. Lift up your hands and praise the name of the Lord because he is restoring. It's been a while, but he's restoring. It's been a while, but he's giving you back 
everything that the devil has stolen. If you believe that, put your hands together and give God a worthy praise. I'm getting it back. Come on, say, I'm getting it back. I'm getting back my joy, my peace, my, my, my passion. I'm getting back. I'm getting back. Everything. Hallelujah. After you have suffered a little while. Kobasha. I know it's been a while. It's been a while, honey. It's been a while. <laughs> it's been a while. <laughs> hey, Kobasha. Uh, but restoration is coming. Hey, it's been a while. It's been a while since this place has been filled up. But I can see every seat filled up. I can see people on the altar giving their lives to God. I can see people weeping on the altar, crying out to God for mercy. I can see God changing, filling with the Holy Ghost. I can see the young people all skin the little boshata receiving. Give us back everything, Lord, that was taken. Restore the joy of my salvation. Abasha. Ooh, let me finish it. Oh, shata. Hallelujah. I will restore. I will restore. I will restore. I don't care what it is. I don't care what you lost. You may have lost some things while you were suffering. You might have lost some things, but I don't care what it is. God is restoring. And he spoke that word. He said, tell him I'm restoring. Tell him it's been a while. A while is over, and now God is releasing restoration. I will restore. Be seated. Let me try to finish this. Woo! He's restoring. One definition says he's restoring back to a state of health and soundness. One, 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 one definition says bringing back to a former place or a former position or rank. And one of the things that the Lord was showing me, he was showing me the difference between restoration and renovation. And, 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 and he began to, he, and, and because he wanted me to understand that the restoration was not just to give you back your joy, but to give you back your peace. But it was also to restore everything that Adam lost. God is saying, I'm restoring back to you. In other words, I'm restoring you back to the state of dominion and authority and power and anointing that was in the garden in the beginning when God said had dominion. And so restoration is not just renovation. See, when as an appraiser, one of the things that, that I was very, very, uh, they used me a lot was in historical properties. I would do the Indian villages, the, the, uh, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the, the uh, uh, Boston Edison area. I would do the historical. And in those historical, ah, Bosha, you can be seated. I'm, I'm gonna, but in those historical houses, the, the communities of those historical areas you could not go into those areas and just renovate. Because renovation might mean that, that you would, it's a historical house, and if they had certain architecture, if they had certain types of, you couldn't just go in there and, and, and put in a new kitchen. It had to be restored back to its original beauty when the when when the when the when the when the when the when the, when the uh, fishers and the, and the fords and the dodges those were the car makers many of them had built those houses so you couldn't go in praise god and just put up some drywall if it had wet plaster you had to find somebody that was an artist in wet plastering because restoring it back to its original order was mandatory. And, and so, yeah, in some of these other areas, you can just throw up this and you could just, but if it had a slate roof, you had to find a, a roofer that had the, to put the slate back on the roof. 
because it had to keep the original content, the original beauty, the original ambiance, the original glamour of that of that age. In other words, praise God, you couldn't just go in there and just start putting stuff in there. And the Lord began to say, he said that some of folk want renovation. And I do do some renovation, but my ultimate goal is to do restoration. Because what Adam lost, the dominion he lost, the authority he lost, I'm restoring. See, some folk want to be restored back to something they were before. But God is restoring you beyond what you were before. He's taking you beyond what you've experienced before. And he's restoring you back to his original plan. And so he's not just giving you your joy back and your peace back. He's not just giving you, praise God, your dance back and your shout back. But he's giving you authority. He's giving you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy. He's giving you authority in all three realms. He's giving you authority in heaven, in earth, and under the earth because of Jesus. So he is restoring beyond what you were before you got into suffering. Oh, if I could just get back to where I was before 2008, when the crash came, God's not trying to get you back to what you were before 2008. He's trying to get you past that. He's making you what you are perfecting and making you what you ought to be. He's shaping and molding you, and he's taking you beyond what you were before you went through the suffering. Let me close with this. I didn't even get to my whole message, but this is enough. Joseph was the young son of Israel before he went through the suffering. When he came out of the suffering, he was at the side of Pharaoh. He was the most powerful man in the greatest nation on the earth. He stood by Pharaoh. In other words, God didn't restore him back to his family. He didn't restore him back to his brother and his mother and his father. But he took him beyond. Restoration always goes beyond what you were before. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to be when I come out of this suffering. But I know I'm going to be better. Come on, say, I'm going to be better than I've ever been before. I don't know what I will be, but I know I'm going to be greater, better. I'm going to have more. I'm going to be more anointed. I'm going to be more gifted. I'm going to have more peace. I'm going to have more joy. I'm going to have more love. When I get through with this, I'm going to have more faith. Stand on your feet. I'm, whew, thank you, Jesus. Look at your neighbor and say, it's been a while. It's been a while. It's been a while. I know it's been a while. <laughs> this is Jordan. I know it's been a while. See, nobody but God could give. See, that, that, that's for so many of you. It's been a while. It's been a while. You know, but you be waiting on God to do something. You know it's been a while. You know what you've been going through. You, it's been a while. You know the prophetic words God spoke over you and you, praise God, been waiting for. And look, at it, it's been a while. It's been a while. But after, the Lord gave me this. He said before and after. What you were before and what you were after. Have you ever seen the before and after pictures? They got some little scrawny man. He looked like Pee Wee Herman. You 
You know, they used to have the magazines we used to get because they were trying to get you to buy some, some of their vitamins or whatever, and they would have on there, and they would have this little skinny man standing up here. And then, then they'd say, before, they have over here before, and then after they'd have over here, he'd be looking like Arnold Schwarzenegger. You'd be saying, oh, Lord, have mercy. And he took those vitamins. You take the vitamins, you'll still be looking like Pee Wee Herman. <laughs> but he said, after. After you've suffered a while. Isn't it good to know that God don't let us suffer all the time? Somebody said trouble won't last always. It's good that we don't have to. I mean, we're going to have to suffer. It's inevitable, as, as I said. But, but, but we, we got to go through some things. But it's just for a while. And, and, and for you, many of you, it's been a while. And, 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 and that means that you're at the end. He's about to restore you. I told the Lord as, as he was ministering to me, because when I received a message, I studied to show myself approved under God. I said, Lord, I want you to restore my joy. You know, sometimes you can go through so much until it affects you. And many times what God is trying to get you to do is while you're going through, he's trying to get you to, to as the, the, the song used to say, don't wait till the battle's over, shout now. He wants you to learn how to praise him through the wilderness. Because he's going to bring you into the promised land. Milk, honey, and money. How many want milk, honey, and money? Restore to me my fortunes, O God. Restore unto us the joy of our salvation. Restore to us our place of authority and dominion that Adam lost. Restore to me, Lord God, my passion for ministry. Restore to me. Let me tell you something. As a, as a pastor, you can get so frustrated with people if you're not careful. Until you lose your passion for doing what you know God called you to do. You can be like Moses. Moses said, look, these backslidden Israelites. <laughs> Even God, got, God said, I'm going to kill them all. And you know when you get on God's nerve. And sometimes you lose so you lose your passion. You know, you know I, was t I was thinking about, and, and I'm going to pray with you. I was thinking about, you know, some of the things we used to do in, in the conferences. And the Lord been dealing with me about conference, about a conference. And I was saying, Lord, I, I, I just don't have the passion. And I just don't tell the truth now, y'all. I know y'all, ah, rah, 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 you know. Sometimes I say, Lord, mm, mm, no. God, I ain't got the, I ain't got the oomph for it. And you keep dealing with me about, about doing this conference. I said, we don't, we don't have the resources. We don't have, you know, I'm telling God all this. God ain't worried about all what you got to say. He just listen to you. And then he just tell you right again, okay, I want you to do this, this conference. And so what I, at, in, as I was on my face before the Lord, and I'm saying to the Lord, I said, Lord, I, was, I, I began to say, Lord, restore. I said, Lord, I did, I, I've lost my, what, what do they call it? They, they say, I've lost my uh, grace for certain things. And I, and I said, Lord, I've lost my grace. I just don't feel it. And you know what God can do? God can stir you up again. Sometimes God needs to stir you up again. Sometimes God needs to start, start that fire burning again. He, he's, he starts restoring your passion. And I said, Lord, restore to me the passion to bring the, to bring the emphasis of your word into this region. And the Lord, and I said, Lord, restore my, my faith in people, in ministry people. Because with all the scandals, you almost lose your faith. What in, you, you lose your faith in the ministry gifts. People I looked up to, 
And then you see them do what they do, and you, and you almost lose. But what you have to do is you have to say, Lord, restore. You got to know that just like Elijah, when God told him, God says that he said, I'm the only one left. And this is the way I felt many times. I said, Lord, is it, am I the only one that think holiness is still right? Am I the only th- one that think righteousness is still right? But he told, what did he tell He said, I got 7,000 that have not bowed their knee to Baal. Father, we thank you. Come on, lift your hands. Lord, you said, I believe you spoke to my heart. And you said that it's been a while for many of your people. They've kept coming. They've kept praising, even though they were going through. They kept giving, even while they were going through financially. And Lord, and they've been suffering for a season. It's been a while. But today, everything changes. Today, restoration changes. Is coming. And you're going to restore the things that have been stolen by the enemy. The Bible says the thief cometh but to steal, to kill, and destroy. But I've come that you might have life, and that you might have it more abundantly. Every head bowed, every eye closed. The reason that Jesus came was to restore us back to God to give up our fellowship back with him, to deal with the sin and the disobedience of Adam. God sent him to restore. And when he came, when he rose from the dead, he said, it is finished. He said, all power in heaven and earth is given unto me. Go ye therefore. Lord, through the suffering, through the pain, I feel like it's that, that there's some of you, it's your time. It's been a while. Your, your, your a while is over. I mean, your, your suffering is over. I can't say that for everyone. And I'm going to say this is what I heard the Lord say to me. He said, I'm going to do for some a biological miracle. It is biologically impossible. I'm asking God for new kidneys. I'm asking God for new kidneys. It's been a while. But you've you've kept coming. You kept praising. You, You kept applying yourself. And God said, it's been a while. But God's gonna work a biological miracle that will not be able to be denied. New kidneys. Oh, Rabbas. New organs. Come on, come on. If if you've had a diagnosis of, of organ failure, I want you to lift your hands right now and say, Lord, I receive a biological miracle right now in my body. Thank you for my new heart thank you for my new lungs thank you for my new stomach thank you for my new liver thank you for my new kidneys thank you for my new pancreas thank you for my new eyes thank you Lord Oh, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> it's been a while, Lord. Your people have suffered long. But they've kept coming. Some left, but some stayed and persevered through these hard times. Stayed here and kept us in this house, Lord, by their giving. Thank you, Jesus. Now. Restore. Restore. 
restore. Jesus, restore. Kaba shata. Some have lost financial loss, but God says, I'm restoring the money. I'm restoring the finance. Thank you, Jesus. The doctor, I don't care what he's told you. I heard that and I and I had to I had to write it down. Sister Hogan is teaching me. She said, you need to write down the things God tells you. He said, a biological miracle. Now, I don't, I, I'm not making that up. He said, a biological miracle. And it looked like he said, organs, new organs. Creative miracles of new organs. New livers, new hearts, new kidneys, new huh, pancreas. Shaba, zodosh. Zana, diabetes, I command you to leave their bodies in Jesus' name. Amen. Miracles, 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 miracles. Zara In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. been a while if, if, if you identified with, 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 with that I'm going to ask you to just step out and come and I'm just going to lay my hands on you it's an act of closure when I lay my hands on you closure from the suffering and entering into the place of restoration because it has been a while when we went through, the, through with the church, it was seven years. It had been a while, but God came through. I hear the Lord saying, sons and daughters, it's been a while. The challenge has been great. And the season of suffering that Satan meant to take you out. But you're, but you're here because of my mercy and because of my love and my grace. Some of you are coming to the end of suffering. Father, release restoration. Restoration. I'm just going to lay hands on you, and I want you to just receive restoration. Restoration. All that you lost, God returns to you. All that you lost. And I hear the Lord saying, daughter, you made sacrifices. It wasn't just stuff taken away, but you gave up some things for me. And the Lord says, it's been a while, but I restore. I restore. I restore. Restoration. Restoration. Everything lost returned a hundredfold. Restore. The enemy has tried to cause you to doubt my love. Decisions that you had to make. But the father says, daughter, know this, that I saw you suffer. And when you suffered and cried, I cried. So I restore to you your joy back. I give you your song back. There's a song that the Lord is giving you. It's giving you back your song. You've been saying, Lord, give me back my song. It's giving you back your song. Yarabasa. Restore. Restore, Lord. Restoration. It's been a while, it's been a while, it's been a while, but now, now, Lord, restore. Everything that the canker worm, the palmer worm, restore the years, restore. Restore. 
Lord, I ask for you to do a biological miracle. Cause the disc in his back to be restored and become perfectly new. Let him have a biological miracle of healing in Jesus' name. Restore. 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 The Lord says the heaviness that you've carried because of loss has been great. But the Father says, but know this, that, that, that you didn't lose her, I received her. And the Father says, know this, that I'm now beginning to place a restoration of your joy. The grieving process is about to come to an end, the suffering of loss. But the Lord says, I will restore your joy. I will restore your peace. I'll give you back your rejoicing. Restoration, restoration, restoration. Oh, yeah. All of that is over. And now, fresh restoration, fresh anointing. Korasha. I will restore. Loss. Regain. Power loss, power regained. Jesus, restore. What she lost in suffering, restore. Lord, a biological miracle for your glory. Jesus, for your glory. Restore, restore, restore. Restore, restore, Lord. Restore the peace, trust. In Jesus' name, restore, restoration. Father, we thank you for your restoration. Lord, let a biological miracle take place in her body. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody give God praise in this place. Come on, somebody put your hands together and give God praise. It says, Dam bale kese, the lama nalakaba. It's as if, as I lay my hands on you, closure, finality. Restoration be yours. Restoration be yours. Give her a biological miracle, Father, in the name of Jesus. Restoration. Thank you. 
restored to a greater glory than the Lord alone. Lord says,
just one more step to fall. You'll, you'll never see me fall to God's as you go. You have to realize that there's no be that that has ever been before. It just got to suffer a lot. Just had to go through a lot. Just had to face some things. But now, and now, and now. And I just. And you're not 
what you ought to be. I will restore and make it better than it's ever been before. Says the Spirit. Oh, Come on, somebody, give God glory in this room. Hey, glory, glory, glory.
You lost your joy, and God gave you back abundant joy. You lost your faith, and God gave you back exceedingly faith. So restoration is not the same. You ought to tell the devil when you're going through, you ought to say, when I come out of this, I will never be the same. I'm going to be better than I've ever been before. Thank you. If you have your elements, listen. The same night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and he broke it. He said, take eat. This is my body that was broken to you. Let's eat together. I feel like that the devil has been defeated in somebody's life this day. I feel like his scheme has been uncovered. And it's all because of the sacrifice of Christ. The Bible says he took the, the, the wine and he said, this is my blood in the new covenant. Drink ye all of it. Let's drink together. Lift your hands. Say, Lord, it's been a while. Restore me. Come on, say, Lord, it's been a while. Restore me. Hallelujah. Put your hands together and give God glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to give it in the hands of, we're going to have our announcements. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Good afternoon. These are our Living Bread Ministries International Westgate Church announcements for the week of April 7, 2024. I'm sorry. Let me cut this off. Corporate morning prayer. Join us for morning prayer every Monday through Friday from 6 a.m. to 6.30 a.m. for a spiritual jump start to your morning. Command your day with 30 minutes of intercessory prayer. The conference prayer line information is available at the information center in the atrium and on our website. Bible study. Please join us each Wednesday at 7 p.m. via Zoom for a time of devotion and study. Apostle Hogan offers a refreshing revelation of the Bible that will strengthen your knowledge and understanding of the Word of God. Zoom information is available at the Information Center in the atrium and also on our website. Baptism at LBMI. Amen. Go ahead. <laughs> if you desire to be baptized or rebaptized, please see Prophetess Linda Hunt. Baptism is scheduled for every third Sunday as members sign up. A brief class is provided on the second Sunday to explain the significance of water baptism. Youth ministry. Woo, woo, woo. Calling all LBIMI young adults ages 18 to 30. I remember that like it was yesterday, and that was a long time ago. Amen. There will be an off-site fellowship for you on Saturday, April 13, 2024, at 6 p.m. Mark your calendars. Please note, this event will not take place at LBMI. Please see Michelle Washington or Pastor Sarah for more details. Women of the Bible. Woo, woo, woo. Yeah. Please make plans to join us every third Thursday of the month for our Women of the Bible series led by Prophetess Joyce Hogan. The next study will be Thursday, April 18, 2024 at 7 p.m. Zoom information will be available in the Information Center and posted on our website and Facebook pages. Cornerstone Women. Look, look at your sister next to you and ask, ask your sister, did you, did you register? Go ahead, ask your sister, did you register? Did you register? Did you register? <laughs> Get ready for our women's conference, Send for the Skillful Women, on Saturday, April 27th and Sunday, April 28th. Please be sure to stop by the registration table after service to register, and don't forget to invite your family and friends and your coworkers and your cousins and, and, and your neighbors, okay? And follow us on social media for more information. Have a blessed week. Listen, y'all. It's been a while. 
but restoration is coming. How many believe that? It's been a while, but restoration is coming. Come on, look at your neighbor and just tell them. It's been a while, oh yes it has, but restoration is coming. Oh, it's been a while, but restoration is coming. But restoration, but restoration is coming. Come on, stand to your feet. But restoration, but restoration is coming. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody give God praise. He was just playing that over there, and I just started hearing that. Hallelujah. How many people have been truly blessed by this word this morning? Hallelujah. I was thinking about it. It's time about restoration. The Winans wrote a song, Restoration has finally come, being restored back to my place in God. Hallelujah. We thank God for that word. Let's look to the Lord. Father, we just thank you, and we just bless you, O oh God, and we give your name the praise, the honor, the glory for the word that has gone forth in this place, O oh God. Lord, though it's been a while, we know that restoration is coming to us, O oh God. Now, Father, as we would leave this place, let that word just resonate on the inside of us, O oh God, all throughout this week, O oh God. Father, take us from this place, but forever keep us in your presence and bring us back together the appointed time in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, somebody greet your brother and sister in love.